Welcome to the first in our challenge. It's now study number 10 and I'm Matthew Featherstone. I'm going to be giving you a few tips on how to prepare uh, for this study. I've uh, learnt it very recently as it's new to me, um, but it's been really nice discovering these, these charming uh, little studies. Uh, study number 10 is a compilation of um, four studies, four miniature studies. Um, all put together. The second study is repeated. Um, and they all address different characters um, and different areas of technique. The first one we have is a lyrical cadenza. Um, imagine yourself being the diva of the opera um, and it's a vocal line that's um, that has a lot of freedom in it. We have mal malinconico as our character, melancholic. Um, so a lot of sadness in um, whatever situation this diva has got themselves in. Um, Asua commodo, um, uh, which is an indication that means at your convenience, um, more commonly known as rubato. So giving and taking time to give this impression of freedom and of improvisation. Um, the first thing I would say uh, is don't be tempted to go big too soon. We've got piano for quite a few bars before we see this indication forte. Um, I've been listening to Cecilia Bartoli recently uh, singing Per Pieta in um, uh, Cosi Fan Tutte. If you can find a video <coughs> of that on YouTube, I would recommend listening to it because the way she uses the drama and intensity in her piano is really inspiring. Um, it's to do with the vibrato but also the placement in her voice um, that makes it sound dramatic and intense even though um, it's vulnerable and quiet and pianissimo. So um, head over to that video if you can. Um, Obviously, it's something we try to, to replicate in our playing. Um, I would always try and not listen to flute players in particular. Um, listen to string players, singers, um, you know, brass players, anything that inspires you uh, to think outside of the box. Imagination is the first thing that is going to push your technique. Um, if you're not thinking, how can I make that sound or how can I make those dynamics, um, how can I risk this more, you're going to stay in a safe way of playing. But if your imagination pushes your technique, you're going to have to find different ways of doing it. Um, so we want to sound colourful and imaginative. So really, really push your imagination on this. Don't just stay with mezzo fuzzo. <laughs> okay? Um, so we want you to be connecting uh, the registers um, in this opening, it, it goes from bottom C sharp to top A. Um, and the first thing we want to think about is keeping an open, neutral throat um, throughout in our quiet playing, in our top note playing. We tend to sometimes squeeze here. Um, so really think about um, having that neutral throat. I don't mean that you need to push your Adam's apple down, <laughs> um, which will sound like that. Um, uh, but just um, the, the kind of speech level that you have um, when you're talking in a relaxed manner. Um, intonation is a big one here. Um, so in the second ledge line, second bar, you've got the C minor um, arpeggio. Um, I would play that quite slowly, really listening to the intonation in particular of your C-sharps, which are notorious for being a bit unstable. Um, do it with uh, within mezzo forte and then add this dynamic range from piano to forte, um, because obviously that affects the intonation. And keep listening, keep listening, um, and uh, adjusting accordingly. Um, in terms of this dynamic range, uh, we want to be helping ourselves with the jaw. Um, it's something I talk about quite a lot. Uh, in your quiet playing, um, thinking about the airstream and where, where it's going. So um, 
to do a quiet top note, we want to be raising the airstream as much as possible uh, and try going off off the flute to, to a point where you, you've just got air and then coming back down. And somewhere in that transition is your sweet spot just before the air um, heads off the flute. Um, <clears throat> and then balance it out with the air flow, so how much air you are giving. Try and keep the sound alive again so it's expressive in the quiet playing. So that's my top tip for quiet playing. For um, uh, loud playing in the top register, we wanna just release the jaw, give it more space in your mouth, um, and, and think about the airstream being thicker and slightly angled down. Um, give it a go and see what you think. Our second study uh, focuses very much on the clarity of articulation in this light minuet uh, character. We want to make sure that we're feeding the sound with air, with our airflow, as much in our tongued notes as we are in the slurs. So it's quite a good exercise for that. So let's just make sure that we keep the line going um, and the airflow going down the flute whilst we're tonguing. Make sure we're not counting on the tongue to make the sound because that's absolutely not its job. Just there to provide um, that detail of the articulation. Um, in the middle register, um, you might want to be a little bit, uh, spend a bit of time uh, on that. It can be a bit splitty if we're not careful, so maybe practice it without the tongue. And then make uh, that a bit shorter. So we're making sure that we know exactly where to direct the sound. And then we just add the tongue for clarity. And um, there's obviously a real change in character in the dolce, which is very slurred, very legato. Um, and then this um, kind of more dancey uh, minuet with the sprightly articulation. And then we've got a pinky workout here on the... So, yeah, just make sure you spend a bit of time on that movement. Um, and you might want to put a bit of grease um, on it for it to be a bit more slidey. I know, a bit gross, but it helps. Study number three is a, a study on tonguing, double tonguing. Uh, it's marked presto, and we want to keep it nice and lively, the tongue nice and crisp, um, and it's marked MF, um, so we just want it to be homogenous um, across all the registers. Now the first thing I would do is actually practice this legato, so um, slurred, so that your fingers um, we can iron out any irregularity we might have there. And we're also um, just controlling the, the quality of sound throughout. Um, when you then add the tongue, obviously we're trying to um, uh, keep, keep um, the, the tongue and the fingers synchronized. So there's no blips there. Um, but also I would pay particular attention to the sound. Has it changed um, from, the, from the slurred version? Um, we tend to narrow the jaw sometimes when we're tonguing, which then means uh, that the sound isn't as strong and sometimes we back off from the airflow. So there are two things that you might want to pay particular attention to. Um, in terms of narrowing the jaw, I would encourage you to try and think about cupping the tongue so that the tip of the tongue is touching the, the soft palate. It's just the tip of the tongue. The rest of the tongue is nice and relaxed, particularly the base. You can check this by um, feeling your tongue muscle under here. Um, then we, we also it means that we can keep our, our, our resonance um, if we're not compromising that with um, more tension in the tongue or less space in our mouth. Um, you might want to think about doing a backward uh, double tonguing, so kuta 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 and that helps us to just um, even out the difference that can happen sometimes between our t and our k. So think about the k being nice and forward, not da ka da ka da ka da ka. Um, and that will do the trick. 
The second theme is then repeated, uh, but with different dynamics, so pay close attention to that. We then come to our allegro, um, which showcases all the variety of articulation that we can use. Um, we've got these offbeat slurs. So really have fun with all of this. Um, it's very characterful and I think we tend to not think about articulation as being expressive. So um, actually try and emulate um, the expression that we use in our speech, in our words. Think about articulation um, as being like words and the way that we speak can be very percussive or it can be very slurred. And um, I, yeah, just think about how that gives quality and character um, to what you're playing. We then have our second theme followed by our final cadenza and I would encourage you to be even more exuberant in your dynamic range and your rubato. Um, finishing on this beautiful pianissimo smorzando. Now we have to piece it all together which is probably going to be the hardest bit. We focused on the detail, the detail of each study um, with different characters, different tempos. And so now start running it um, and anticipate what the needs are gonna be for the next study. Um, and try and get into the zone of each character. Don't just run, run it without kind of going through the, the motions without thinking about it. So that's, it. I hope it's been helpful for you. Um, you're now halfway through, I think, well, nearly halfway through your, your challenge. Um, so keep going. I hope it's um, uh, been helpful in giving you a focus. I know it's a really tricky time where we don't know when we'll be able to play in front of someone again. Um, and, you know, the direction of what, what we're doing seems a little bit like we're in limbo land. So for me, it's been um, very helpful having this focus and this discipline and I would encourage you to really keep going with it. Um, good luck!